So we're the director of football at Spurs and we've appointed a new head coach to lead the team. That man is Angelo Peruzzi and after a rocky start, he led us to a slightly respectable sixth place finish in his first season, playing this rather unorthodox 5-2-2-1 system. Now, six isn't particularly terrible, it's also not amazing. And you'd think that with some savvy transfer business by uh, yours truly, we'd be able to improve on this in our second season. Today, I'm going to show you how... um. How it started because um yeah let's let me show you hello and welcome back to our spurs save where we are not the manager but instead the director of football season two is well and truly underway and the situation looks like this to dive straight into it we're um we're on new year's day 2024 the january window of season two has just opened and we're eighth in the league this is we're outside of the european places we're behind Chelsea, Villa, United, Newcastle, Arsenal, Liverpool and City and we've got a decision to make. We'll get into it straight away. Is Angelo Peruzzi going to be keeping his job? Because if we have a look at the club vision, we are expected to qualify for at least the Europa League this season. I actually think I was maybe expecting a little bit more. We finished six last year. We brought in great players. The signings we made in the summer at the end of last episode were great. Guardiol, Kulusevski on a permanent, James Ward-Prowse and then Rasmus Highland coming in to replace Erling, not Erling Haaland, Harry Kane who got that injury. If we could sign Erling Haaland, that would be pretty useful actually. But Highland in for Kane, who is almost back from his injury by the way. I thought we'd, we'd strengthened. I thought we'd done quite well in the window. We do have a bit more money to spend. A lot of money has actually come out as well because we've been paying a few of those future clauses those installments for transfers but we've still got 29 million pounds to spend we've still got some wage budget to use in fact over 100k of wage budget we could go and do something there's also some sellable assets as well do we though do we continue with angelo peruzzi as our head coach our self-appointed head coach himself here are we going to continue with him as our manager i think he's pretty good his people management management is good his motivation's really good very determined very adaptable does he lack a little bit in tactical knowledge down at 12 here is this something we should be trying to improve on is this something we should be trying to improve on he plays this 5-2-2-1 dm am i'm not sure it's best for spurs it's because although actually it hasn't even been an issue this year is it meta in fm is it good enough to make us a really strong team? Or are we just being beaten because we're not playing the systems that work best in Football Manager? That's kind of what I'm worrying about. I've put in the team that he seems to be picking most often then throughout this first half of the season. I'll show you some of the results, but let's have a look at some of the player stats before that. The goalkeeper, Diogo Costa, has been playing pretty much every game. Weirdly, Fraser Forster's played one game and so has Hugo Lloris. I don't know if that was cup competitions, but either way, they've played one each. He's been quite good Costa in goal. It seems so far and hopefully will improve actually in the future too because he's only 24 as well, which is quite young for a goalkeeper, isn't it? At the back, it looks a bit of a weird one here. He's gone Romero, Guardiol, Bastoni, but also Antonio Silva's played 14 games. So he must be rotating that quite a lot. I wonder if it's kind of with Guardiol, who's only played 19 himself. It seems like maybe those two are rotating. I'm not exactly sure what, wh wh who's playing in which role here. I had a look at the most recent game, which was a loss to Crystal Palace. And the back five looked like this. It was Silva on the right, Romero in the middle, and Bastoni on the left-hand side of the three. It was Guardiola not, not starting in that game. So I wonder if that's something. He's also playing Hoiberg. I've just seen that. He's playing Hoiberg as a number 10 surely surely we've got better where's Kulosevsky? is he on the bench here he was on the bench it's such weird choices it makes me think do we need to see if we can upgrade on Peruzzi today do we need to go and see if we can headhunt a better manager because results haven't been as good as I think they could be if we had in a proper coach maybe with that better style of play maybe with that better tactical knowledge I'm not sure I'm kind of in I'm 50 50 right now and I, I just wonder if we need to make a decision. Are we going to need to go early? Because if we don't finish in this Europa League spot in the top seven, are we going to get sacked? Because I kind of feel like it might happen. That's the main aim of the season, isn't it? They're disappointed that we're outside only on course to achieve a top half finish. I'm worried. We're at a C, so it seems okay. We've done great in the Carabao Cup. Apparently, we're competitive, even though I'll show you we went out very early in that. 
and we're challenging for the Europa League because we're into we're on course to go to the semi-final in that I'll show you how that's gone as well we've just gone through the group stage so there still might be disappointment in that regard if we go out of the Europa League too we'll come on to all of that though let me just continue to show you the squad that's been picked Poro has been the right back he's played 22 times the doji at left back currently slightly injured but he's played a lot of games at left wing back 21 of those games look Great having him back from his uh, loan spell at Udinese. Really, really... I mean, just look how good he is. Honestly, one of my favourite left-backs on the game, I think. Anyway, I keep saying that because I, every time I look at him, I'm, I'm impressed, I think. In the midfield, Kamavinga and James Ward-Prowse. I don't think they've been playing these roles. I can't actually see the roles that are being played in-game. I can just see where they're playing and who's being picked. I'm guessing that Kamavinga's more of a ball-winner midfielder um, in this left-hand side. And then you maybe you have Ward-Prowse as a playmaker. Well, Prowse, by the way, 12 assists. That's pretty decent. Actually on course for a record for a season as well. Obviously, he's taking all of the set pieces, it would seem, and getting plenty. He got three assists in that one game we looked at in the last episode, didn't we? In front of those two, then, Kudasevsky and McAllister are the first choice starters there. Hoiberg apparently is getting starts at Cam as well, which is just bizarre to me. And then up front, Hyung Min Son, he's first choice. Rasmus Highland has started six and come off the bench bench eight times got four goals so when he has played he's been decent but son has got that starting berth again if he's playing him as a deep line forward i just don't know if we're getting the best out of him his average rating is a seven so it's not terrible and he's called 12 goals halfway through the season which it's not awful is it but i assume that's not that many in the league in fact i think i saw it on here it is yeah 12 goals how many of those are league goals six it's not amazing is it we're not exactly a free scoring team maybe the problem is that we're missing harry kane i don't know i don't know i did notice as well by the way harry kane has got himself a new contract he has signed i was looking at the contracts here look he signed oh, oh no he's been offered one i saw it coming up maybe he hasn't got it yet then has he been offered one i'm not sure i won't be able to tell will i but i did see that they were in talks about a new oh yeah look it says it here look new age 160k until 2026 i saw as well that Udoji signed the new contract too on 130k a week. I'm not sure the financial control from e from our um, our manager here is too amazing, but at least he's signing our players. The only players that are going out of contract in the summer are Perisic, Sessignon, Dyer, by the way, actually Dyer, Perisic, Sessignon, Kane, but I think he's going to sign a new one. Lloris, who's retiring, and Fraser Forster, who is also retiring. We're going to need a backup goalkeeper as well in the summer. That does make me think here. Let me just go back to showing you exactly all of the stats and everything on here. This is my squad view, which I really like. I guess, now that we've seen how the player's been doing, let me show you the results uh, to lead us to 8th place on January the 1st here. They've been... They've been up and down. Last time around, we were here. It was a 2-0 loss to Liverpool after beating West Ham and Brighton and drawing to Villa. It was a good start to the season. Two 4-0 wins at home gave me a lot of optimism for this season. I was thinking we, we could have a really good season here. And then we had back-to-back -back losses. Wolves and Manchester United. Wolves at home as well. That one that one really stings. We'll be the better team here. It was quite even. And then they got an, an early-ish goal from maxi gomez who they've signed to play striker for them it was that's a bit disappointing isn't it that game there and then from there i get a loss against manchester united we did beat kilmarnock 6-0 our europa league group by the way i'll show you it right now um so easy we won all six games which is a lovely confidence boost and definitely helped with 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 morale and things we were we won six out of six <laughs> dinamo kiev kilmarnock and maccabee haifa were the other teams I don't think we've had the draw. We're not in the draw yet because we're in the round of 16. So we've avoided the knockout playoff, haven't we? Teams like Inter are in there, though. There's some good teams. Napoli are in there as well. So Dortmund, hopefully we avoid those when uh, when we go through to that next round. It's not been drawn yet and it's not for a while. But yeah, after that point, after our Europa League games there, we lost to Chelsea. We beat Everton. We beat Watford. We lost 6-0 to Manchester City. They have got our number, haven't they? They outplay us. Oh, I, Haaland scored five. I didn't realise that. He scored five and got an assist. Erling Haaland got a 10 out of 10. So, to be honest, yeah, um, we got we got done there. There's our team. It was It's pretty much the team that I showed you earlier. So, we were first choice. Not a great game from Diogo Costa with a 5.8. Following from that, though, we lost to Arsenal in the home leg of our derby. North London derby home game. Not amazing. 2-0 win against Leeds. We beat Fulham. We drew to Brentford. We lost to Middlesbrough. We drew, drew to Burnley, beat Newcastle, and then most recently lost to Palace. It's just up and down, isn't it? It really is just 
There's no real consistency here. We've not gone on a run of consecutive wins except for like here. And one of those was the Europa League game. We need consistency in the league. I think I'm going to say something a little bit outlandish today. We're going to make the next game a little bit spicier because I'm going to say if we don't beat Burnley away from home, who are bottom of the league, I think Peruzzi is going to get the sack. That might be a little bit trigger happy. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below. Like right now, in this situation, what would you do in your director of football saves? Would you be sacking the manager after this start to the season to try and rescue your season with four points off seventh? Seventh might not even be good enough for Europa League. We might need to finish sixth. We're eight points off it. Would you be sacking the manager or would you be holding out and giving him the chance to improve it over the rest of this season? Or would you be pulling the trigger? I'm tempted to say if we don't beat Burnley, they're bottom, by the way, 20th. They've only got eight points. They've won one game all season, five draws. They've lost 14. If we don't beat them, I think I'm going to call Angelo Peruzzi into a meeting. And I think it might be bad news for him. The way that we're going to put a little bit of extra pressure on this and make it quite cinematic is that we're going to watch this game. I've added a new manager. As somebody said in the comments down below, great shout, by the way. We should definitely do this so we can do live comms. I've added a new manager called Watching Man. Um, let me just show you Watching Man. Fantastic manager is Watching Man. Here he is. Um, before I'm going to get ahead of things here. He's not very good. Before I know what the comments are going to do, the comments are going to say you should make Watching Man the manager. I'm not going to appoint Watching Man, okay? I don't want to see any campaigns for Watching Man to become manager, all right? Just I'm nipping that in the bud before it even starts in the comments down below. But with Watching Man, I've gone to the Premier League and I have... How can I get to the Premier League nice and quickly? If I go to here, I've gone to Tottenham's schedule... I've clicked that we're going to attend this match with Burnley. We're going to watch it. We're going to go and it's like, you know, when the board start to attend matches and you're like, oh, the manager might be getting the, the sack here. The director of football, us, we're going to be sitting in the stands watching Angelo Peruzzi take charge of this Burnley game. And we're going to make a decision. If it is terrible and we play awfully and we don't win, I think I'm going to sack him. Shall we, um, we get into the game? Okay, so here we go. We are going into the game now. But as a crowd member, as somebody watching the match rather than a manager or anything, we get to see exactly how they're going to set up. Veghorse is back at Burnley, by the way, which I quite like. There's the Burnley team. 4-2-3-1 from them. There. Okay. What is going on? McAllister's playing up front. Highland's playing as a cam. Perisic is playing centre mid. What have I just seen? But hang on. Is Angelo Peruzzi losing his mind? I've seen Perisic playing... Defensive midfield. I've seen McAllister striker with Highland in behind him. I didn't even get a chance to see the rest of the team. That Okay, I think Highland is up front because he's just taken the kickoff. So maybe that's okay. Let's actually look at it in-game here. We've got Kulisevsky and McAllister in behind Highland. We've got Porro, Antonio Silva, Romero. And then I assume down this side is Perisic, which would make a lot more sense. And do you know what? Maybe I was freaking out a little bit. It's like when they get it wrong on the... Uh, maybe they've read it. You know, when they do the team team sheet and it's in like number order. And it's like, why'd you do that? Put it in the positions. Maybe that was why. Either way, I think we're... I think it is no reason to, uh, to panic here. We're going to kick off here. I'm just going to move these up a little bit. I'm going to put my correct view in that I like to use, which is this one. And... Uh, we're now underway. There's Perisic down this side. We're going to watch on key highlights. I'll jump to the big moments in the game. But let's see... If Peruzzi can keep his job, because I think I've made a decision. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna remove him from his post if we fail to win here. It's pressure on. They are bottom of the league though. If he gets a win here, he's you know he's gonna buy himself a bit of stay, stay of uh, execution. Is that a word? Is that a phrase? I feel like is that a thing? Anyway, he's gonna avoid being sacked. Is what I'm talking about. What's going on? Why have I got so many visualizers here? Let me change those. Highlight here. 23 minutes in. Nil-nil then. Perisic down the left. Kulisevsky. I've just checked the team and it is as we would have expected it to be. Kulisevsky is going to come to him. That's a terrible baby leg finish. Straight into Anti Muric in the goal. And uh, yeah, like I mentioned, Highland is up front. Look, Kulisevsky and McAllister in behind him. It wasn't that weird lineup that we saw at the start of the game. Maybe he did the old switcheroo right at the start there. I'm not sure. Kulisevsky. Driving into the middle. Looking for Highland, who puts it wide. Was he on? He was on side. It said that was a sitter. And I feel like it actually was a sitter. Oh, my word. That's that's a shame. To be fair, then, to Peruzzi, as we go in at halftime, have a look, having a look at those match stats, we have been the better team by a long shot. Burnley 
haven't had a shot. They've not had anything towards our goal. They've only had 29% of possession. It's going to be now up to Angelo Peruzzi to turn this domination into a victory. We've only had a couple of highlights. That Highland chance, that Kulisevsky chance. Not much else. There's the team. Look, Guardiola starting on the left, Silva on the right, Romero through the middle. McAllister and Kulisevsky in behind Highland. That means that Hyung Min Son is on our bench. It means that Harry Kane is back on our bench, by the way. Now back. He wasn't even registered for the first half of the season. He's obviously been registered since the window is open now. He could make his return from his ACL injury. He might be needed because it's still nil-nil. And we're into the 60th minute. An hour has gone. Peruzzi needs a goal to save his job. This feels really slow. I feel like... Maybe two up is the way to go. I felt like it was too fast before, but that felt too slow. I feel like I've got used to using it on two up from the middle. Anyway, here is that highlight. Silva into Kamavinga. Kulisevsky. That's good football. Perisic. That's great football. Perisic has scored down the left-hand side. Our left wing back in for the slightly injured uh, Destiny Udoji. Perisic gives us the lead. And it might mean that Peruzzi stays in a job. Ah, oh, now I'm even second guessing that. I'm thinking, but are we going to qualify for the Europa League? We've got a long way to go. A lot of ground to make up. That is a good goal, though. And it does give us the lead. It gives us the goal that we deserve from our, our domination so far. 68% possession. No changes yet or any changes been made so far? No. Oh, yeah. Porro off. Hoiberg on at right wing back is the only change so far. There's another one, though. Who just came on there? Highland's gone to attack midfield. Son has come on. So we've had another change. Dyer's on in midfield. He's also brought on Eric Dyer for, I think, James Ward-Prowse. Again, that's weird, Peruzzi. I'm not going to question it because you are winning this game, but it's odd, isn't it? It wasn't Ward-Prowse. It must have been Kamavinga then. Dyer, Kulisevsky. Good save by Muric. Went low. And uh, he managed to make the save. There's Rasmus Highland looking very tall. I was just seeing there. Is it him there? That might be Kulisevsky. Anyway, corner from Ward Prowse. He's good at these. We know this. In swinger, headed away by Brownhill. Perisic might recycle it. Ward Prowse is going to get another chance to deliver. Weird. Romero, Guardiol, Son down the right hand side. It's good football, actually. It's now cleared, though. He worked it. He played it in behind Highland, so he couldn't get the shot away. We're into added time. It might just be a 1 0. It's going to be a 1-0 win. And with that, I put the pressure on and he did get the result. It means that we stay in eighth. We're just a point behind Chelsea now. They do have a game in hand. But do you know what? If we sneak into seventh, that sounds... It's still disappointing, isn't it? Like sneaking into seventh wasn't what I was hoping for for this season. It's Villa that have disrupted things. They've they've got themselves into fifth. They've having a, they're having a really good season. They just won 3-0 away at Middlesbrough as well. Okay, it is a win. By this means then, I think, that I'm going to have to go and do some transfers and see if I can improve this team in this January window. I'll show you how we get on in those games in January. And maybe, just maybe, we need to keep him in his role for a few more, a couple more months, I think we're going to have to give him. Let's see if we can bring in any really good players and how the rest of January goes. January looks like this for Spurs, along with me doing some transfers. We've got games against West Ham, Tranmere in the FA Cup, Chelsea, Newcastle and Brighton. It was, who was the team just above us? Was it Chelsea? That game with Chelsea could be really vital. If we beat them, in fact, they've just played the late game there. They lost. So we are only a point off seventh now. And technically seventh could be Europa League, I think, if certain things go the right way. Or is this where the Europa League, do we get an extra spot in it? I'm not exactly sure, but I think... Basically, we need at least seventh, but probably six, which means United or Villa need to drop off at some point. We're a long way behind, but I think I'm going to keep Peruzzi in the in the role. I'm going to go and play up until the end of January. Now, these five games, I'll show you how they go, and I'll also let you know any signings that I managed to make. I'll see you on the 31st of Jan. All right, so it's the end of January, and what a difference a month can make. We have had some huge results and one huge new signing. I can't wait to show you this one because we have signed Jude Bellingham. Jude Bellingham is now a Spurs player. We've gone big and spent basically all of our budget for the January window on a new man in our midfield. Jude is a Spurs player. Very exciting. I'm not quite sure how we've managed to persuade him to come. It might be the £220,000 per week. 
I, it might be Peruzzi as the manager, but we're a Europa League team and he was happy to come here. A bit like the Camavinga signing. We're being able to persuade some really big names to come and join us. We are building an amazing midfield, aren't we? If you think of McAllister and Camavinga, James Ward-Prowse and now Jude Bellingham, I am... I'm in love with this midfield. It's so, so good. He's made his debut as well. He's played in three matches already, four in all comps, because uh, one of these games in January was a cup game. And he's been pretty good. He's got one assist and one player of the match, 7.27. And that just goes to show that clearly we were playing quite well over this January. We've um, we, 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 we've won every game. I, I talked about needing some consistency. And out of nowhere, Angelo Peruzzi might well have saved his job because we have become more than consistent. We've become brilliant. It took this one win against Burnley, the game that we w went and watched in the crowd. After this game, which was quite a tight affair, that 1-0, we've gone and just let loose. We beat West Ham 4-1. Here are the goals in this one. In a, We just swept them aside at the London Stadium as well, away from home, even though it's quite tight if you have a look at the stats here. We just swept them aside with Son up front, with McAllister and Kulisevsky in behind him. I don't think we'd sign Bellingham by this stage. I'm trying to think now. It's gone off the screen. I don't think we signed him by this stage. It was Porro down the right-hand side, losing it, but winning it back. Son in the middle. That was 1-0 after just three minutes on the clock. Then we did concede an equaliser. It was Ben Johnson down the right-hand side. How funny, by the way, that I've never thought of this, that they've got a player that they play right back called Ben Johnson after having Glenn Johnson for so many years. Anyway, we've been uh, been distracted there because Son made it 2-1, dinking it over the keeper. He has hit some form and starts to score some goals. Even with Harry Kane returning from that injury, he's not fully fit. That is awful from the goalkeeper, by the way. Ariola was it in goal there, I think. Gives it straight to Son, and uh, that made it 3-1. And then 4-1 was towards the end to cap off a brilliant win away at West Ham. It was our star number 10, uh, Hoiberg, who had actually some interest from Juventus. I almost sold him to Juve for about £30 million, but they didn't end up making a bid. They were linked. You know, when you get the news article saying they're going to make a bid for £35 million. I thought, do you know what? I'd probably sell him for that. They didn't make the bids. Um, so he is still here. There has been some actual sales that I should show you before we go through these other games here. The other sales that I've done in January are... Ben Davies has gone to Southampton for £9.25 million. He has played no games, really, since uh, Perusi came in. And I just thought, do you know what? We'll take the £9 million. It helps to pay for a little bit of Jude Bellingham, which is going to cost us a lot, up to £100 million. He had that £99 million release clause. So I had to spend £75 guaranteed on him. It was 25 up front, so... I think over the years, as long as we improve as a football team, as long as at some point we go and qualify for the Champions League, which with the players we've got, we should do. If we need to swap the manager, then maybe that's the case. But I think we can afford it long term. And selling players like Ben Davies for 9 million, I think we'll just help with that. We sold Alfie Dorrington and Eric Dyer for 2.5 million pounds. I know that is cheap, but we've brought in so many other centre backs now and his contract was going to run out in the summer and he, he didn't want to sign a new one. So... I just thought we'll take the 2.5 now, get his wages off for another six months or so. It kind of made a bit of sense just to let him go. So that's what we've done. That is our January business. Back to the results to show you how the rest of Jan went. It was after the 4-1 win at West Ham, a 3-0 win in the FA Cup. We had Highland scoring a goal in this one. Won't show it because that was pretty run of the mill. I will show you though, Destiny Udoji's goal in a 1-0 win against Chelsea. Now this game, if you remember back to the table, was vital. They were the team that were in 7th when we were in 8th. If we beat them, we'd overtake them. Bellingham started in this game. Look, in behind the strikers. I think it makes more sense for him to play a little bit further forward with some of the midfielders we've got, by the way. Destiny Adoji scored the winning goal in the 4th minute. An early one. Jorginho did get sent off late on, but this was the goal. It was from a James Ward-Prowse free kick. Back post. It was headed away. It bounces down or comes back to Udoji on the edge of the box eventually, look, and he just drills it. Oh, he actually curls it. Left-footed. Top corner. I, I mean, I'm going to keep waxing lyrical about Destiny Udoji. I think he's one of my favourite players this year on FM. He's so good. And he's getting better as well. Look at these up arrows. It's beautiful to see. He gets even better acceleration. Wow. Like 17 acceleration, 18 pace. I'm all over that. Six foot two as well. So he's not even he's not even small. He's tall. I'm going to keep clicking on him and keep talking about him, I think. He was the goal scorer, the match winner in that 1-0 win. And then, this is huge. I guess I will show you this because this is Newcastle, who are a very, very, very decent team this year. In fact, I want to show you where they are in the Premier League table because I think 
it helps to, to give the context a little bit in this one. They are fourth and quite quite happily in that top fourth now. If they win their game in hand, they would go up to third. So this was a really impressive win away from home at Newcastle, beating them 2-1, really stamping some of our credentials. Bellingham played a little bit deeper here, look, in this one. Kulisevsky and McAllister back in. And it was two goals from the first from Kane and then Kulisevsky with the winner who got us this win. A huge win in the context of our season. Here is the penalty from Kane, slotting it past the goalkeeper, which is Ugurchan, the uh, the the Turkish keeper that I did want to sign. They did equalise Lobotka Anderson starting a game here. Izak with the equaliser getting away from our defenders there a little bit too easily. Costa couldn't keep it out. And then we got the match winner though through... I don't remember who it was now. It was a Poro free kick and then headed in, I think. No. Kulisevsky, this was it. He just got it, picked it up, drives back into the box and no one goes with him. The great goal, really. Easily recycling that set piece. 74 minutes on the clock. We got ourselves... And a late-ish winner in this one. And that, basically, at that stage, I was like, this January's been brilliant. Regardless of what we do against Brighton, this has been brilliant. We backed it up with a 2-0 win against Brighton anyway. So, so confident. So good. Maybe Bellingham has been that missing piece. He's really taken us to a new level. I wonder. That's the, that's the question, isn't it? I'm going to go before next video to the end of this season. And I guess, actually, we might come back before the end of the season if I need to make a decision about sacking the head coach, which I'm hoping that isn't the case and that next video can be end of season, season three transfer window, summer transfer window for our third season. That's the plan anyway. These were the goals in this tuna win against Brighton. A doji through ball. Son with the lovely first touch and a decent finish, dinking it over the keeper, Robert Sanchez. That was in just before half time, and then into the second half towards the end of the game. Porro, very involved. Here's Bellingham. First real involvement we've seen him in the match engine, isn't it? And then Perisic, we, score him, scored, we saw him score that goal against Burnley. He's got another one. He's played more games than I expected him to. That was Udoji on the pitch there. No, he wasn't. He must have come off look for, for Perisic in that game because we saw him set up the first goal and then Perisic scoring the second. I thought they might have been both been on the pitch at the same time, but they weren't. All good. That is the situation. I'll show you the league table because it's looking a whole lot rosier and it does give me hope. I've hoped we can finish in this top six here and get that Europa League finish. And I know it's not amazing, but it at least puts us in a position that maybe in the summer we can push on. I was hoping we'd push on this year. We weren't able to, but let's just keep our job. That's the main thing, isn't it? We are now just one point behind Manchester United. If we win our game in hand, our game in hand is against... I'll see who is maybe this Villa game we played before they play. So we could maybe see what the table might look like at that point. Villa is a huge game as well at home. If we beat them, we would only be a point behind them as well, which we're not out of the race for a top four place here because even Arsenal are on 50. If we win our game in hand, well, I mean, we're five points behind them is what I should say with 13 games to go. It's difficult, but it's not impossible. And that means there's something to play for here. I'll leave it there for today. Thank you so much for watching today. Thank you for being on board with this series still. I'm having so much fun. Hopefully you can tell how much fun I'm having with this one. If you want to go and join in with the save, I put the original save file over on the Claytron as well. Thank you to all of the Claytron members. The link to that is in the description. If you want to check in and see how we're doing with everything, if you have any questions about how you would run a save like this, join the Discord and subscribe to the channel because it's lovely to see more people joining in with us on this journey. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like on the video. But most importantly, have a lovely rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.